Hi, I'm Zara Rubin here for ABS. I'm interviewing Arno here, also known as DJ Oya Bun. Can you tell us your inspiration behind uh, Afro360? What inspired you to put this night together? Oh, it's not a big inspiration, basically, but I've just noticed that working in the sort of uh, African circle here in London, uh, I noticed that a lot of people were not really honest. Yeah, and if I wanted to make things happen, I had to do it by myself. So there's no big philosophy behind 360s, but the idea basically is to like, um, how can I put that nicely, uh, is to promote African culture but not only through music and everything, through visual arts, through photography, camera, the idea is to project film here, to invite lots of different kind of artists and make them interact, that's the big idea behind it. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, where you're from and what brought you here? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, what brought me here? Where I'm from? I'm from Ivory Coast, Benin and Congo. I'm a sort of African melting pot. Uh, I grew up in Abidjan and I think I left Abidjan at 18, something like that. I moved to Paris and then here in London. Uh, I've been in music since a long time. I've been rapping, producing, making a lot of stuff in Abidjan and Paris. And I started DJing basically here when I arrived in, in London. Uh, never came to my, to my mind to DJ, but it's the first thing I did. A bunch of friends came to me, asked me for some music from Ivory Coast, and I was like, okay, why not? Let's try it. Let's see how, how is it. And I started to enjoy it, so I keep on doing it. So it's been like five years now, five years, something like this, yeah. Can you tell me, Oya, how does your night differ from others in the uh, African music category? I know that's you don't like to use the term Afrobeat. That's the big question. Uh, how does my night differ? Uh, there's one thing. The, D, the two DJs of this night, we, 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 we're coming straight from Africa. Uh, we left Africa very, very old. Not very old, but like 2018. And we've been partying a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot in Africa. So we have this, um, there's still this uh, African party in us. So that's probably the main difference with the other DJs in London, which are brought, come from here. There's a big difference in the way we're going to play the song, in the selection we're going to choose. Uh, the certain song that they don't know and we know because it comes from our childhood we were five or four years old so that's probably the big difference between the other DJs so and um, and uh, we don't have no limit how can I say we we trying to 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 play every good song every good song from all type of style we don't try to limit ourselves that's probably the main difference. What do you think of the emerging trend of British-born uh, artists identifying themselves as uh, Afrobeat artists? For example, uh, we have African Boy and Fuse. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, has the Afrobeat does very good and positive. I mean, me, I always say is like to some young brothers from Ivory Coast, uh, explore the rhythm of our country. Explore it. There's many surprises. There's many things you could do with it you can turn it into something that sounds very modern and cool so don't hesitate you know and i like that that's very that's very nice i'm seeing a lot of them now trying to make some african music and it's positive for us yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, lastly have you seen a rise in the popularity of the african music scene uh, since the uh, investment and the involvement and collaboration of american artists such as kanye west and uh, akon Ah, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a tough question. I mean, no rise. Um, 
No, I don't think that they bring something more to it. It was already it was already on the rise. It was already popular. They just came to surf on the wave and 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 get new markets, which I understand is business. So you have to do what you have to do. But I don't think they bring something more to it. Probably they they might help a few artists like Debenge or or other people to 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 get exposed in other country where they they couldn't. But apart from that. They didn't change nothing for us. I'm here with Larissa, the lovely designer here tonight for Afro 360, the lady behind some of the beautiful designs we're going to see tonight. How long have you been designing? Well, recently my mom told me she found a picture of me. I was three years old, <laughs> making doll dresses. But I remember I did my first dress at the age of eight when I got my first sewing machine. So, <laughs> so I've been doing it for a pretty long time. Okay. Yeah. And tell me some of the inspiration behind some of your designs tonight. Are you wearing your own designs tonight? Yes, I am wearing one on my top. I usually make things that I feel comfortable wearing first before putting on paper. And some of the time I dream about them. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing. I always have like a notepad next to my bed. And when I wake up, I first sketch and stuff like that. Do you incorporate a lot of African designs, African inspiration, African philosophy, African culture into your designs? I use, I use most, mostly the prints. So I mix... Um, European designs with African prints really. I don't really in a way use all the African design itself. Mm -hmm. I use the African prints mm -hmm. and make uh, European designs. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's all about individuality and about I love it when I walk down the street and people and then I turn heads. Yes. That's all about it. It's like turn hurt and be individual. So if people notice you, whether they love it or they hate it, that's exactly. good. You get a response. <laughs> you do get a response. So okay. if you get people looking twice you don't get a response, you'd be like, oh, this is different, this is interesting, so. And how do you find the response to your ideas and your, your creativity? Well, my, my style is quite quirky, so I've got mixed responses. Some people will be like, oh, this is too out there for me, because I use a lot of bright colours, because this is why I, like. I use a lot of bright colours, and it's not to everyone's taste, but I... I get a good response from some people, yeah. I think I spoke a little bit with Oya Bun. I said that I have seen in Selfridges a lot of African designers. Well, not, not a lot, but a few African designers. And I found it very inspiring, very encouraging. Where do you see your brand a few years from now? Well, I would love, first of all, for in the nearest future, I would love to own my own boutique. Because so far I'm selling online and in others, people boutique. So I would love to own my own little boutique and be able to sell worldwide, really. I'm here with the other half of Afro 360, uh, Bogasi. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about this night and why you're here tonight and why you've put it together? We decided to um, to play all the to bring all the aspect of the African music on the, on the same platform. So we decided to came up with an event where we can we we're gonna be promoting uh, the music, the fashion, the art, the dance. What else? Uh, uh, maybe the comedy, we never know, we never know. And where are you from, Bugasi? Um, I'm originally from Ivory Coast. And what's your real name? My real name is Ange Patrick Capo. Ange Patrick Capo, huh? That's my real name. But Bugasi is just, just a name. Friends gave me the name and he just sticked, he just sticked on me. And what do you play? Do you, do you and uh, Oyabun, do you have like a partnership? Do you play some sort of music and he plays another genre? Yeah, I would say I'm more pop. Oya is more deep, like, but we play the same type of music, but in any genre that I would play, Oya would be the deep, it would go deep into it, and I, I would be in a pop, in a kind of pop selection, so, yeah, that, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and what does the Afro 360 movement mean for you? Is it a movement, first of all, or is it just a night? No, it's a movement, it's a movement, because we thought, we thought that, 
Uh, nowadays, we've got Afro beats, which, which is taking over. It's, it becomes really big, and we thought it would be good to take people to the to the um, to the actual cultural side of it, which is really important. People listen to the music, but they need to dig into the culture. It's like hip hop. Hip hop as a culture, and if you don't put the 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 culture uh, in, in front of it, people might get lost, and uh, the, the 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 music, the genre might just go down. It might just die. So. This is the cultural part of the Afrobeat movement. So, can you tell me what does Afro represent for, for example, the African or black economy um, as a whole? I mean, the, the Afro, for me, you can find the Afro everywhere. You can find the Afro in South America, you can find the Afro in America, you can find it in India, you can find it in Europe. So, uh, it's, it's a culture, it's a culture. Even myself, I'm not able to, to describe it because I'm, I'm, I'm discovering actually. By doing this, I'm learning and I'm, I'm proposing from what I'm learning basically. Okay. Yeah. And where do you see this scene going? How do you see it evolving in the next few years? Oh, I, 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 see, I see it far. I see it far. For me, Afro is the future. Afro is the future because Afro is the, is the base, is where the, the culture, the, the whole culture from America, from other country, from South America, this is where it, this is where it came from. So for me it's the future.